what's going on youtube this is marcus and i am back for the last installment of my recap and review for um the netflix series or mini series i guess you can say murdoch murders a southern scandal um also just real quick episode my, my recap and review for episodes one and episode two are both uploaded on my channel um, so definitely check those out before you uh, listen to this one. Also, um, this recap will have some spoilers in it. So if so, if you are interested, watch the show first and then come back and check out this recap and review. Um, but anyway, let's just get into it. So we previously saw in episode two um, that Mallory had been discovered dead about seven days after the the boat incident um investigation revealed that in spite despite paul's denials and his and his constant attempts to blame connor that paul was more likely to have been behind the the wheel than connor um and upon being detained and brought before the court paul pleaded that he was not guilty of the charges against him unfortunately paul and maggie murdoch were fatally shot in their moselle home on june 7 2021 Although Alec Murdoch was the one who called the police, the investigation revealed that Alec Murdoch actually possessed the murder weapons listed in the crime. And as a result, it's possible to, to conclude that Alex Murdoch was involved in killing his family. So episode three opens up with another highly suspicious murder that occurred in 2015 when a young boy named Stephen Smith was found dead in the middle of the highway. A bystander who called 911 was the one who discovered the, the body first. Um, Will People was a journalist working on the murder case of Paul and Maggie when he received information about this 2015 case. Sandy Smith, the mother of Stephen Smith, hired an investigator who also received numerous tips about Stephen's death from other sources. A recurring name in all of these tips was that of Buster Murdoch. Um, the hearsay revealed that Paul's older brother, Buster, had had a sexual relationship with Stephen, which the Murdoch family had looked down upon. Now, I want to correct this and say that from my memory, it never was confirmed that they were in a, in a sexual relationship. It was just implied um, because Stephen was an openly gay man and him and Buster were... I guess you can say they were close friends. They, you know, were always hanging together, spending a lot of time together. So, of course, people would kind of speculate that um, that there was something. And let me why and 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 I want to know why is that? Why why is it that if you have a man who is openly gay and you have a guy who is straight and he's good and he's close friends with a gay guy? Why is it that people automatically assume that something has to be going on between them? Why can't it just be that this straight person, you know, I guess it goes into that whole thing of the toxic masculinity, but a straight person can be friends with the person that's gay, can be okay with the fact that the man is gay and there not be no issues or um well i guess it really comes more so from people that's on the outside looking in because even in this case um it was you know the outside people that that was that was making all of these speculations that you know something was going on between the two of them and it's just like why can't it why can't it just be that this straight man thinks that this gay guy is is a cool is cool a person to hang out with but then also on the other hand even if you as a straight man are cool be or you know is cool with this gay man i think that you also has to have to have enough confidence in yourself and in your own sexuality that you that you're not going to let the opinions of other people dictate how you um how you uh what's the word it's not cooperate how you and this and this gay man engage with each other. I guess that can be I guess the best way to put it. But anyway. Um So where was I at? 
Okay, yeah, so the hearsay revealed that Paul's older brother Buster had had a sexual relationship with Stephen, which the Murdoch family had looked down upon. So there may be a strong possibility that the Murdochs were complicit in Stephen Smith's murder. In addition to the news of their relationship, there was also a tip about Stephen's encounter with Buster prior to his murder. According to an informant, Stephen had met Buster on the highway the night before he was slain. Um, there was some sort of speculation in this story that um, Stephen was driving his car and the car ran out of gas. He called Buster to come pick him up. Buster pulled up. I think it was Buster Paul and another person that was in the car and allegedly um, this was when they did away with Buster. I mean with, with Stephen. Um, but yeah, despite the fact that all, that all available evidence pointed to the Murdoch's None of the um, none of the none of these informants stepped forward to make a formal statement because they were scared of the Murdochs and their and their ability to harm people who stood in their way. Like I said in episode one and two, they had a reputation for making people disappear. The Murdochs had never been interviewed by the investigating team regarding the murder of Steve Smith. Um, therefore, the case just naturally faded away. And that was another thing when it came to the Murdochs, as far as a lot of these murder cases. Um, a lot of the, you know, even going back to, to Mallory, a lot of these cases just kind of got swept under the rug. There, if there was an investigation that went on, it wasn't a full and complete investigation. Um, because like I said, they had a lot of the law enforcement, police officers, investigators, all these people in their back pocket. So there was a lot of things that were kind of skipped or glazed over, swept under the rug, you know, sad to say. Um, the topic of Gloria's passing came up. Gloria was the housekeeper who raised Paul like her own child. She passed away in 2018 after being knocked down the stairs, allegedly by the Murdoch's family dogs. Gloria was admitted to the hospital after suffering a severe head injury, and two days later, she passed away. Um, from what we know... Um, Allegedly, she was coming, you know, coming to the house that morning for work. She allegedly fell, fell back down the stairs. And when Maggie came outside to um, talk to, like, come out to that, you know, because I, I think she heard her when she screamed or whatever, when she fell back. But anyway, when Maggie came out there, she said that she asked her, like, girl, you know, like, what happened? And that's when she told her that the dogs had tripped her. Um... There wasn't also a point where Alec said that, um, because I'm trying to remember how it went. I think Alec was the one that called, or he talked to the the police and told them and basically reiterated what happened or what or what he was told happened. Because later on in the show, when they talked to the I guess he was like the groundskeeper. When they talked to him, he said that Alec wasn't even there when the EMS arrived. Um, yeah, that's what it was. He taught, he told the EMS what happened, but the groundskeeper was like, Alec wasn't even there when the EMS arrived. It was just him, Paul, and Maggie because him and Paul, because when, when she fell back and was on the steps, her head, her feet were, it was above her head. And so, the groundskeeper and Paul kind of shifted her body to where she was laying flat on the ground. Um, but anyway, so as theories about Maggie or Paul being involved in Gloria's death started to circulate, Anthony was under the um, persuasion that Paul was not to blame because he was the one that loved Gloria the most. I think I mentioned in episode one that he was more close to Gloria than he was to his own mama. Um, Alex Murdoch had been charged with stealing money from the legal practice in the interim. Um, it came out later on in this episode that Alex had been mis misappropriating funds from the law firm and it also came out that um he because the fact that Gloria's death or whatever happened on his property he took out like an insurance some some kind of lawsuit against the insurance and he was supposed to have been taking the money 
and giving it to Gloria's family. But when you heard them giving their testimony, they never received any of the money. Um, Alex Murdoch, who was at his, who was allegedly at his parents' home at the time of the murder, um, that was not his entire. That was not entirely truthful in his testimony. Now we're going back to when Paul and Maggie were unalived. Um, there was also video footage that was recovered from Paul's phone um, where Alex Alex was heard in the video talking to Maggie. He wasn't in the video, but they could clearly hear that it was his voice, um, which indicated that he was, you know, present at the time of the murder. Um, now, this doesn't necessarily mean that he was the one that committed the murders, but he was definitely there. So if he didn't commit the murders himself, he knows who did it. Um, there was an attempt to ass to assassinate Alex Murdoch in the middle of the highway three months after um, the double homicide of Maggie and Paul. Oh, excuse me. Alex ended up calling 911 and he reported having been shot in the head. But the police had already knew right away that it was a setup. Um, Alex had been committed to rehab at the time, and he was addicted to opioids. Um, Alex's lawyer had even admitted that everything he did was an attempt at suicide motivated by his grief over losing his family. Um, but, as the, but as time went on, Curtis Edward Smith, um, the assassin who was also Alex's drug supplier, was apprehended and charged with assisted suicide. Um, but it wasn't a suicide. It was staged to suggest that Alec was also the attended victim. Um, later it had emerged that Alec had paid money to Curtis both before and after the double homicide in his family. Um, in this regard, Valerie said that Curtis might have been involved in both the attempted murder of Alex and the murders of Paul and Maggie. Um, which Alex might have planned himself. You know, going back to what I said, he may not have been the one that actually done the murders, but he, I believe he knows who it was. So, Alec Murdoch ended up being accused of murdering his son and wife and was charged with insurance fraud because, um, and that was what he would ended up being arrested by, but he pleaded not guilty and rejected all charges during the court hearing. While Alec was incarcerated, his son Buster was frequently seen playing in the casino with his uncle John. And Buster was also accused of using the legal firm's lost money. Um, but Buster refuted all those claims. I mean, it doesn't, because literally, I think Paul, Alec was arrested or went to jail one day. And literally the next day he was seen in Vegas at the casino with his uncle. And it's just like, now, and mind you. It was public knowledge about Alec allegedly misappropriating all of these funds. So, I mean, of course, people are going to assume or think that you took you was taking that money and gambling it. Um, but anyway, Alec Murdoch was a prime suspect and suspect in the depths of Paul and Maggie. And the inquiry was still ongoing. Despite having entered a not guilty plea, Alec would be in prison without the possibility of parole if found guilty. After Paul passed away, um, the Mallory Beach investigation is still pending and the Murdoch family continue to deny any involvement in Stephen Smith's murder. When the crime docuseries comes to a close, Mallory's friends and family reflect on her memories and discuss how Paul Murdoch's viciousness caused them to lose a significant portion of their heart on February 24th. They all want justice to be served for the families that have been harmed due to the scam and that Alex Murdoch will receive proper sentence for the crimes he committed. And the thing that was crazy was that at the end of the episode, because one of the things that went on um, in episode three is we there were a lot of recorded phone calls between Buster and Alec while he was in, in jail or in prison. And so the very, the very last phone conversation that went on between Buster and Alec was that Alec ended up calling Buster and it was like, hey, I forgot to ask you something. And then he was like, did did Netflix put a uh, put something out about this, and then it goes off, and so it kind of makes me feel like, you know, did he go through all this because he wanted to be famous? Because if you go through Netflix, 
it's specifically the documentaries. There are so many documentaries about serial killers and about scams and scandals and extortionists and all of this stuff. So I was kind of like, you know, did he do all this stuff because he wanted to be famous or, or world famous because he was, you know, his him and his family were famous in South Carolina. Um, it's just weird to me that he felt the need to call and ask that particular question. Um, and and to this in this case it's the opinion because if I'm not mistaken, I think this show ended, I think it was around like June or July of last year. And I have seen on YouTube of other people that have been um like covering the court cases and all that stuff. I ain't get I ain't I'm not that involved. So I ain't getting into all of that. But yes, he is still, you know, going to court for the different things that he's been accused of. Um but yeah, yeah. Overall, the show was 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 very interesting. I I enjoyed it. Um, it's a shame that people who are you know have power or have money, the fact that they can get 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 away with so many things, um, especially murder. Like I, it's just it's it's, it's that just shows how corrupt this world is that just shows how corrupt the government is how corrupt law enforcement is and it's and it really is a shame but anyway i thank you all for tuning in please be sure to give this video a thumbs up leave your comments down below and also subscribe to this channel if you have not already done so and i will talk to you all later